The subcommittee will come to order. Without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess at any time. I want to welcome everyone to today's hearing, the first hearing of the intellectual pro, uh, uh, in, of the IP subcommittee of the judiciary. And intellectual property and strategic competition with China was chosen to be our first hearing. Chosen not because we have exclusive jurisdiction over China, but because it was incredibly, incredibly important that we look at what is now the third largest applicant for, for patents and an organization who has, has a strategic plan. As we'll hear from our witnesses today, America, the heartland of innovation, is in fact fertile ground for, uh, for China's investment in our patents. American national security is at risk because of China's government's quest to achieve superiority using both internal and externally uh, gotten technology. They will use both legal and illegal means in order to gain technology that they take to China and often use to create secondary patents, meaning steal the technology from here, patent back here again, sue then here. Our witnesses uh, represent a broad group of, of experts in the area, and I believe they will both educate us and, to a certain extent, scare many of us. The fact is, we understand that China is one of our largest trading partners. China is, arguably, our peer in total GDP, and has a growth rate that is likely to exceed ours in the coming years. Normally, that would be a good thing. Ever since Nixon went to China, we have believed that engagement with China and the growth of private enterprise and wealth of the Chinese people would, in fact, moderate the behavior of the Chinese Communist Party. As we'll hear from our witnesses today, not on the, deal, the dealing of the Chinese party, but on the dealing of the government relative to their desire to take from America and Europe technology for Chinese global advantage. And what is the price tag of that? To the U.S. economy, it represents anywhere from a low of $250 billion to estimates that reach or exceed $600 billion a year. That's more than the GDP of many aspiring countries. It is more than any one corporation would ever dream of making in a year. And it might, in fact, be low in our estimations. Entities funded by the government <clears throat> are also flooding the Patent and Trademark Office with dubious patent applications. In fact, not only are they dubious, but they often end up in the hands of non-practicing entities who specialize in suing U.S. firms, meaning they get, they get the patents that are pretty useless except to sell to trolls. They sell them to trolls. Many companies are involved in this, but I'll mention today Huawei. I'll mention them because in addition to being one of the largest stealers of technology, including uh, 5G technology, they also represent a national threat to any country that puts their products in, so much so that the United States has chosen to ban their products. We ban their products. We do not ban the revenue they receive, both directly and indirectly, from dubious patents that are filed against U.S. companies. To make matters worse, they don't just do it in uh, Article III courts. They use our ITC as though they were a domestic producer in order to sue and often stop an American company uh, from producing a product that they, that they, the American company, invented. <clears throat> it should not be surprising, then, that the fastest growing foreign uh, country of origin for U.S. patents is China. It went from fourth in 2018 to second in 2022, uh, exceeding Japan and our other allies. As troubling as that sounds, it could be worse. The World Trade Organization, the WTO, with support of the Biden administration, 
adopted a waiver that permitted China and other nations to disregard IP rights on COVID vaccines held by American companies. That is essentially a, a transfer of technology to China and other countries. And I, and I would mention China and India as the two major beneficiaries. What's more troubling is the desire to make this a regular practice of, of essentially after someone has invested millions or billions to simply set aside uh, their patent rights. When patent rights are set aside, there is two sets of, of damage that can occur. The first set is the obvious that your foreign markets disappear because the technology is available and instead of buying your product they sim or licensing your patent, they simply produce the competing product. But what makes matters worse is this technique also can create the seed for companies that otherwise would never be able to catch up to catch up or even pass us and essentially put the U.S. innovator out of business by flooding the market with products that are the fruit of a patent not paid for but given away. <clears throat> Many of these things would appear at times to be uh, partisan issues. And certainly the fact that President Biden has made this decision uh, it makes it seem partisan. But let there be no doubt. Many presidents of both parties have wanted to look on the world stage as though they cared more about the rest of the world than they cared about American in ingenuity being properly rewarded as the Constitution requires. So although I, I make this point and I will be introduced or have introduced the No Free Trips Act, I want to make it clear we expect this to be and continue to be on this president and those that follow a bipartisan issue, one in which members who care about domestic intellectual property production will side with making it stronger, and those who care about a global view may choose to be on the other side. I don't believe that will come, uh, come out on partisan lines as much as it will come on ideological lines. Many of my best partners over my 24 years in Congress, 23 going on 24, have in fact been members on that side of the dais, and I expect that to continue to be. Unfortunately, China has learned to capitalize on developments of, of certain U.S. Uh, states in addition to that. Today we will touch on, uh, to a certain extent on non-compete agreements. I expect this will not be the only time. My home state of California has effectively made non-compete uh, non illegal. As a result, anyone who, who takes a job in California has a free ticket to go from Ch California with any technology they've gained, including trade secrets, and simply go to another country with it and sell it. There are countless examples of that, including Qualcomm, Intel, and Google, uh, and Apple, who have been the victims of technology developed, trade secrets developed, simply going to another country. And again, if they go to China, they often end up <clears throat> in patents that are the fruit of that, that otherwise unknown or developing technology. Simple antitrust or simple uh, non-compete agreements that simply invalidate the year or two after someone leaves from being able to patent something that they learned about in their, in their first company have been invalidated in California, and there's an effort to make that national. Let there be no doubt, we support the idea that people should be able to leave a job and go to another job. No non-compete should bar somebody from being able to continue to operate with the knowledge and training that they came in with. But there's a huge difference between a salesman going from one country, company to another and a salesman leaving with the price list, the customer list, and all the data and simply moving over to another company and saying, I come with the information that I took from my company. That's easy for people to understand. It is more complicated often to understand when you have intellectual property or the knowledge that is in, in a nascent way 
but extremely valuable. <clears throat> so as you can see, today's hearing, the first of many, uh, is necessary because this, not just China, but <coughs> our intellectual property is under attack, our system is under attack, and this committee is absolutely committed to both make, give it airing so the public understands it and do legislation to protect the American inventor.